let's throw some jabs. The fight starts now! Well, Sergio, Edgar Berlanga makes his matchroom debut when he takes on former middleweight title challenger Jason Quigley on Saturday. Berlanga began his career with 16 straight first-round knockouts, but some of the shine has come off after his last four fights have gone to a decision. Sergio, is it a failure if Berlanga doesn't make short work of Jason Quigley? No, it's not a fa failure, but it's a possible red flag on Edgar Berlanga. And uh, not only that, because those first round knockouts get good to you, but then you start fighting fighters that are actually winners, who are accustomed to going the distance, who aren't uh, 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 intimidated by power, who aren't intimidated by that hometown crowd. So that's what happened when uh, Edgar Berlanga started fighting fighters like uh, Coceres, who Steve uh, uh, Rolls, who was in there with Golovkin. You know, guys that know how to survive. They know how to, power doesn't intimidate them. Those first 16 fighters he knocked out in the first round, those were guys you're supposed to look good against and knock out, especially if you're a, a power puncher like Berlanga. He's a beast, no doubt about it. The Puerto Rican Mike Tyson. But now, just like Mike Tyson, when you're fighting fighters that are accustomed to power, you're gonna need more than just that in your bag of tricks. You're gonna need a lot, you're gonna need a jab, you're gonna need body shots, ring generalship, know how to manage the time, the clock, everything. Power's not enough, man. It's once you get to the elite, and that's where we're at with Edgar Berlanga. He's fighting fighters that aren't accustomed to getting knocked out, they're accustomed to the power, and they're spoilers. So this is going to be a, a, another example. Jason Quigley is one of these fighters that can be a spoiler. You know, he has the experience, he has the amateur pedigree, he has the height, the reach. So we're going to find out exactly what happens. But no, the shine's not off Berlanga just yet. He's just fighting winners now. I hate being the guy that is going to be critical of Jason Quigley because I, Jason Quigley, I like a lot. I've covered him a lot over the years. But Jason Quigley is the guy you're supposed to knock out in the first or second round. Jason Quigley is basically a career-long middleweight who two fights ago was steamrolled. You were there, Sergio. Was steamrolled by Demetrius Andrade in the second round. And nobody's out there calling Demetrius Andrade a big knockout puncher. Now he's moving up to 168 pounds. He's coming off a decision win in his last fight, a comeback win in Ireland. This is not the opponent that should be going six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds with Edgar Berlanga. If Edgar Berlanga struggles in this fight, or even if Edgar Berlanga takes this fight to the distance, I think we're going to have a lot of questions about Edgar Berlanga. Because Jason Quigley, while he's better than a lot of the guys that Edgar Berlanga beat during that 16-fight first-round knockout streak, he's a small guy. Edgar Berlanga is a big guy with a big punch. This is the kind of fight Edgar Berlanga needs to look spectacular in, should look spectacular in. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't make quick work of Jason Quigley, I do think we would consider it a failure. Quigley's not a small guy. I mean, he, he's a tall fighter, you know, and he knows how to and he knows how to uh, fill out nicely. He has wide shoulders, so he's not as small as you think. Hey, he's he, not Sergio, he was small. He's not a natural super to middleweight. Compared to Andre, compared to Andre, he was small. Andre's a fight. huge middleweight. Andre's okay. always been a huge middleweight. So here's the thing. Against Andre, he got knocked out. And yes, it was surprising to everyone. Andre doesn't knock out anybody. But Andre is a champion. Tyriano Johnson is a world champion challenger. So he got beat by, by you know, guys at the top. I don't think Berlang is going to make quick work out of Jason Quigley. I'm going to say that on record right now, Chris Mannix. I know you're Irish. So is uh, Quigley there. But I'm telling you right now, it's I'm giving him some credit. That's why I hate I'm being like that I'm giving him some credit, Mannix, quickly. because this man has the experience now, the championship experience. We've seen Edgar Berlanga not uh, maybe struggle, but not knock out the guys that he's supposed to knock out in the last four fights because they know how to fight. They know how to box and stick behind the jab. These are things that Jason Quigley knows how to do. I don't think Berlanga is going to get him out of there. I also think he does knock him out, but I don't think it's going to be quick. I think he's going to have his hands full for a while, and then the power will set in. The size will set in. The hometown will set in. But you're not giving Quigley enough credit here, Mannix. Look, Quigley does have a win over Shane Mosley Jr., and that win has mm -hmm. aged pretty well you know, over the last couple of years as Mosley has risen in the middleweight division. But again, you're talking about generally smaller guys. When these two guys look at each other in that moment before the opening bell. There is going to be a big size difference. And if we know anything about Edgar Berlanga is that he does have a lot of power in that right hand. And I'm not sure how Quigley, who has never, couldn't keep Demetrius Andrade off him, is going to keep Berlanga off. If Berlanga starts getting counter-shotted, if Berlanga looks a, you know, a little bit tentative, looks a little uncertain, then I think we're gonna have a problem. Now, I like what Edgar Berlanga's done 
over you know the last few months. He went back to his former trainer, the guy that brought him into the pro ranks. Uh, and I think that's a good move. That's you know some familiarity there. All the people I talk to around Edgar Berlanga say that has made him and that will make him a better fighter. But Sergio, this is look. Edgar Berlanga wants big fish. Edgar Berlanga still wants a fight with Canelo Alvarez. When this fight's over, if Berlanga wins, we're gonna be talking about Berlanga against Jaime Munguia. To get those fights and to be competitive in those fights, he's gotta look great against Jason Quigley. And if he doesn't, it's just gonna be a problem. You don't have to knock out a fighter early to look great. Berlanga can still look great by going some rounds, maybe even getting a late round knockout and having some moments of struggling. That's what's gonna make him better, not these first round knockouts. Not, All not right, so, going but let me distance. ask you this, let me ask you this. Why? Why don't you look at what Demetrius Andrade did as an example? Demetrius Andrade knew going into that fight that if he messed around and played with his food when it came to Jason Quigley, he was going to get killed for it. He knew he had to go out there and look spectacular. That's exactly what Andrade did. Andrade walked right through Jason Quigley. Why? Why are you not buying into the idea that Edgar Berlanga should do the exact same thing? I think I think uh, Andre surprised quickly. You know, we know that Andre's not a knockout puncher. He's not a fast starter, and I think he surprised quickly with that. Uh, broke his jaw too. That that was surprising, and, and he hit him with a good shot that actually tweaked his jaw and broke his jaw. So that that has a lot to play with. So Ber I think Berlang is not going to have that champion. He, first of all, he doesn't have that championship experience as Andre. He's not a southpaw. He's not as long as and as I, I think Andre. You're dealing with a champion, and Berlanga, you're dealing with. Someone that has a lot of power, a lot of fan base, a lot of, uh, he has, he had a lot of things going for him, but he's not on the championship level yet. Quigley has fought on the championship level. So I think experience is going to play a factor. I don't think he wins, Mannix, but I also don't think he's going to get, you know, uh, uh, knocked out like you think he is. I think he's going to be a competitive fighter. Really. You know, you, you say though, he, he fought at the championship level and technically you're right, but when he fought at the championship level, he got absolutely wrecked in that fight. Like that, that's all I'm saying. Like if Demetrius Andrade is gonna walk right through you in the way that he did, I, I gotta expect Edgar Berlanga to do it. If he doesn't do it, uh, I think there'll be a lot of people that have a problem with that. Hey, it's experience, Mannix. It's, 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 it's not always pretty, but losses on championship level against tough guys, they make you a better fighter, especially against the Berlangas of the world, the guys that are, aren't there yet at the championship level, but they have a lot of momentum going their way, and Quigley is the spoiler that can actually uh, test them, see if they're ready for that. There you have it. Jason Quigley, spoiler, according to Sergio Moore. <laughs>